I need a podcast room and a yard and preferably a toilet. That's all. I feel like this is my house. Good morning. Always end on cold. It's miserable. Oh God. It's supposed to help your anxiety. Over it. I'm done. I'm done. I recently got this. It's a towel for your hair, but it's silk. I'm gonna put it on quick. Another little weight loss victory that I've noticed is regular sized towels almost wrap around me again. I couldn't tell you the last time a regular towel would go all the way around. Bath sheets are superior and they will always be superior, but it's nice to know that I could cover up with this if I needed to, because usually I would just hold them across my front and leave my ass crack out. This is nicer. for a giveaway. A giveaway that's going to inspire you this new year. Let me just reach in the back, pull out the magic bag. <sighs> Ta-da! So I should be going to get an oil change, but instead we're gonna do a giveaway. I have been lucky enough to work with Hydro Flask, I think twice over the past couple months. We decided to do a New Year's giveaway for you guys. New Year, new me. I'm gonna be healthy. And what better way to do that than with all your new Hydro Flask goodies? Changing our habits and making new habits can be kind of difficult, but it's a little bit less difficult when you have good goodies. One of my biggest things is drinking water. You need to drink water. And I drink a lot more water with my Hydro Flask. I'm gonna show you guys the things that you are going to be winning or you could win. I wish that all of you could win, but you can't. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, but one of you will be winning this bag and everything that is in it. Like, look, they even put bows on it, okay? Okay, so I'll go over the rules after I show you what you're gonna be getting or could be getting. The first thing you could win is this tote, but it's not just a tote, it's insulated. You could pack for a picnic in here. You could pack for the beach in here. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I did pick the color, so I'm really sorry if you don't like yellow. This girl loves yellow. It's the 35 liter, I'm assuming is what the L stands for, or large. Either way, I'm here for it. Insulated tote in the color cactus. Oh, it is leader. It says it on the front. It's got the lining on the inside. You could win not one, but two of the 40 ounce tumblers. Y'all know how I feel about this tumbler. Do you see these straws? I know we've all used a million tumblers. Nothing keeps my water colder than this one. Every time I'm asked, what's my favorite tumbler? It's Hydro Flask. They look so cute. They fit in your cup holder. And the straw. I honestly think the straw is what does it for me. Other than the fact that no other cup keeps my things cold as long as my Hydro Flask does. I can pick this up from any angle. It does not matter. And I can reach the straw. Versus having to finagle the lid to be the right way to have easy access to the straw. These are two special edition colors of the 40 ounce Hydro Flask. 40 ounce all around travel tumbler in ivory slash oat and this one oh they're just opposites this one is an oat slash ivory they're kind of color blocked where the handle is lighter than the base and then vice versa the base is lighter than the handle and the straw love these you're gonna love them too super easy to clean by the way how many times do you see me go on walks and you constantly ask me where you can get a good thing for your water bottle while you're walking 2024 is the year of hydrated hot girl walks i picked out this teal color for you guys it reminded me of florida you're gonna win this sling it's like hangs on your side you don't even have to take it out to use it which is why i love this one so much also inside of this sling how cute is this pink hydro flask it's a 32 ounce wide flex straw cup in trillium it has the flip up straw that we all know and love and the carrying handle she's a classic but she's a goodie and then obviously the sling the next thing that you're gonna get is this koozie tell me why i'm so excited about a koozie i don't know but i picked out this purple one i'm currently drinking my awani this would help it stay so much cooler in my car dishwasher safe the 12 ounce cooler cup in lupine it's just this really pretty purple and it fits in my cup holder also in the purple color you're gonna get a mug tell me why i kind of want to use this for soup that's what you make it if i want to put soup in a mug i can put soup in a mug also this time of year i'm just obsessed with hot coffees i'm not the best at making hot coffee but i can get there i can improve you're also gonna get 
get the 12 ounce mug for all my hot drink girlies out there and my soup consumers. This is for you. That is everything that you guys can win. And all you have to do is be following me here on YouTube. Make sure you're following Hydro Flask. I'll leave their links down below. Comment down below who you would share some of these goodies with. I feel like these are best friend tumblers. Like obviously you could keep both for yourself, but you and your bestie would look really good with opposite but matching tumblers. Also let me know how you guys plan to use some of this stuff to help with whatever your new year's resolutions are or any just goals that you guys have. I know this time of year, everyone's so focused on like being better and new year, new me. I think a lot of really good things can come out of that. I feel like there's a healthy way to approach that as well. The past few years, I've looked at life as trying to be 1% better every single day. And although I'm not perfect on that and it's definitely still a struggle. Um, in fact, I just got out of my first therapy appointment and first therapy appointment I've been to in a minute, which is a baby step. And now that I'm not nervous, I won't feel bad bringing my hydrofoss next time full of water. Let me know any of the little goals that you guys have. Honestly, I could use the inspiration to come up with some goals for myself. On my plane ride tomorrow, I'm going to be writing my ins and outs and my goals for the year. Maybe make a vision board. I haven't decided yet. I don't really know how to make a vision board. Maybe a vision Pinterest board. Huge shout out to Hydrofosk for not only working with me on this video, but for allowing me to give all of this to you guys. Hydrofosk has been nothing but kind and sweet and supportive and understanding of my life the past few weeks and of the holiday season in general. Their team has always gone above and beyond to make me feel comfortable and supported and appreciated. Obviously, I work with brands all the time, but it's not often that you come across a team like the Hydrofloss team. I just feel like they genuinely care about people and those are the brands that I get excited to work with and to continue to work with. It just feels like such a blessing and such an honor to have this opportunity to give this stuff to you guys. One week from this video, we will pick the winners. I'll get in contact with you. Please, if you get any messages about Telegram or anything that seems fake, it's not me, okay? Don't fall for a scam. I will reach out to you personally, whether that be Instagram, it'll be my account with the check mark. I'll find a way to communicate with you. We'll get your address and we'll get you all of your goodies as fast as we can. I'm really grateful for you guys. I'm excited to have another year. Every day that we are here, we have a chance to be a little bit better than we were yesterday. Instead of focusing on all the things that we don't have and all the things that are going wrong, I think we need to get better about realizing that we are lucky to simply be here today. If you do want to win this, just make sure you're following me here on YouTube. I'll have Hydro Flasks links down below. And then just comment anybody that you would potentially share some of these goodies with and what your goals are going into this year. I love you guys. I'm excited for you. And now we can continue on with the video. <laughs> this camera for quite some time now and I have had zero issues with it. I have recently dropped her once or twice. I'm assuming that's the cause, but half of this video is out of focus. <laughs> Isn't that annoying? The whole segment of me explaining Vlogmas and kind of just why I took a break is out of focus. And then me showing you what I got for Christmas is also out of focus. And I always show you what I got for Christmas. Even though I know it's probably not relevant anymore, I still wanted to show you. There was also a whole clip of me trying to just think about where I want this year to go. I feel like at the end of every year, I always sit down and evaluate my channel and where I want to go with it. And honestly, maybe it's for the best because I don't know that I was in a very good place to speak over the past week or so. I'm going to start by showing you guys guys what I got for Christmas and then we're gonna chat for a little bit and then I'll let you get into the rest of this vlog. After I filmed this the first time, I dispersed all of my Christmas gifts. So I have tried to round them up. I probably am forgetting some. I'm definitely forgetting some. So please take this as my apology in advance if you got me something for Christmas and I didn't include it in this video. I love you and I'm so grateful for everybody who got me something for Christmas. This was the first year that I made a Christmas list. I will say I'm gonna keep making Christmas lists because you get the shit you want. I also haven't been shopping anywhere near as much and that makes getting things all the more exciting so without further ado this is what i got for christmas in 2023 how many years have i done this way too many apparently we're not doing non-bragging disclaimers anymore so we're just gonna hop on into it apparently duncan is really curious i had put books on my list because I've always been a reader, okay? I've always loved reading ever since I was little. City of Bones just thrust me into the reading space. It's never been something I've like really shared online. I do kind of think I wanna make some book videos this year, which I know is very outside of my regular content, but I wanna start incorporating the things that make me happy more into my content. And reading is one of my hobbies. I put some books on my Christmas list and my sister got me some. She got me Iron Flame. I already own Fourth Wing. I just have not read it yet. It's very high. 
my on my TBR. But from what I've heard, people are upset with this book. So I don't know if I should be waiting to read it until the third book comes out. Give me your thoughts, give me your opinions. Nonetheless, this book is stunning with the pages. I get pretty much all of my book recommendations off TikTok. I really like fantasy, or what is it called? I love the A Court of Thorns and Roses vibes, City of Bones vibes, Clockwork Prince vibes, Divergent vibes. I had read pretty much every series out there when I was younger, but as an adult, I'm just getting back into it. Apparently, this is a good one. I think the second book just came out. This is Divine Rivals. It's also small, and that makes it less intimidating, especially to start. Oh, the stickers. She also got me a bunch of cute little reading stickers that I can add to my computer or a hydro flask. Tell me this doesn't scream Samantha Joe. My mom got me this vase from TJ Maxx. It is so freaking cute. Imagine some flowers in here. A little Trader Joe's bouquet. I'm actually genuinely struggling with this camera right now, so I'm just trying to make it through this. I don't know what I need to do to fix it. I'm gonna be honest, but we're trying here. She said she got this from TJ Maxx. It is so freaking perfect and so me. It wasn't on my list, but Mama Kelly knew I needed it. Ooh, 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 ooh. This I did ask for. It's a Sol de Janeiro bum bum body obsession little kit. None of it's in here anymore because I have already started using it. It's a mini body oil, which I really wanted because I can travel with it. One of my goals for the year is to stop over packing as much to intentionally plan my outfits. So that way when I'm going on a two day trip, I can put it in a carry on. Obviously if I'm going somewhere for a while, I can check a bag, but this is the age of carry on 2024 carry on energy a bum bum body scrub the shower cream gel the bum bum cream i think it's boom boom cream i'm forever gonna say bum bum and the perfume mist and i feel like people assume that this perfume mist is overrated but it's a fan favorite for a reason Ooh, another book my sister also got me this book my comfortable spot is just like the fantasy what are they called the young adult fantasy i don't know would this be considered a thriller megan i'm not really sure what genre this is but she got it for me to challenge me to step outside of my comfort zone when with reading. I also have my Kindle right here. I like to read on both of them. I feel like I've been really into just holding a book again recently. She also got me Powerless, but it's on my bookshelf in the other room and I do not feel like getting up to go get it. I'm a migraine girl. I get so many migraines. They started when I hit puberty. I also get tension headaches from like staring at my screen, whether I'm editing something on my phone, scrolling on TikTok too long, or editing a YouTube video on my computer. I kept seeing everybody on TikTok talk about these headache caps. I will say, and you're not gonna like hearing it. Ooh, this is fantastic. At the beginning of last year, I talked about it in a YouTube video. I went and got Botox right here. I think she put a little bit up here, but I don't really have a big forehead, so I don't really have forehead lines. It's all gone now. I don't have any Botox left. I didn't get a single tension headache while I had Botox in my forehead. I had gotten it redone once here in St. Pete. I have an appointment on the 9th, and I'm gonna have them redo it again because ever since it wore off, I have started to get my tension headaches again. I mean, I can only speak from my personal experience but when people say Botox in your forehead keeps you from getting tension headaches, they mean it. Put this cap in the freezer. You put it on like this when you have a headache. This is gonna be fantastic. It's already cold and I haven't even put it in the freezer. One of the hardest things for me is falling asleep when I get a migraine because I have aura migraines, meaning a certain spot in my vision gets blurry and then it like fuzzes out until it's my whole vision and then I can't see anything for like 20 or 30 minutes and then the headache and nausea comes. And so I've learned that if I can fall asleep during that time, where my vision's going out. My headache is not nearly as bad and I kind of skip the whole throwing up phase. The hardest part is to fall asleep during that time. Like I can never get myself to fall asleep. I already own that Renfo eye mask that everybody is talking about on TikTok right now. It warms up your eyes. It massages your temples and your eyes. The power combo that this and that mask would be, I'm gonna be unstoppable. I don't think anybody got these from me. I think I bought these for myself and they're just in this bag. Something I'm doing is I'm pretty much replacing all of my socks. I don't know that at this point, I have more than like three matching pairs of socks. I'm just gonna try, emphasis on try, to be more intentional about keeping my socks together. While I was in Wisconsin, I had bought some socks and these ones are just from Aerie. Crew socks. I do like long socks, but I also have big ankles. So sometimes they kind of just, look at my toes. They hurt right here. They cut off my circulation. I had put some crochet stuff on my list. Anything that has to do with crochet, I'll take it. My mom found this little Harry Potter crochet set. It says you can crochet 14 
magical products from the Harry Potter films. I'm still definitely learning how to crochet and I've been challenging myself to learn different stitches. I don't understand how to read patterns yet, but I'm trying to figure it out. I kept trying to take on like big projects, but from watching a bunch of people's videos, I just, I think it's better to just like pick little obtainable projects that you can actually finish because then you get that like reward out of it. I'm choosing smaller projects like that instead of deciding to crochet an entire sweater, which I have been trying to do and I still haven't finished it. And I've learned that's because I just have not advanced enough for that yet. We're still learning. I feel like little kits like this are gonna be really good to just learn different stitches maybe or just like increase and decrease. If you don't care about crochet, then you don't care what I'm saying. She also got me this cute little penguin one. My mom also got me the Taylor Swift Time Magazine. Annika told me that there's a bunch of different covers for this. I just think this is such a cute thing that my mom thought to do for me. And with that, she also got me the Taylor Swift fan book, The Incredible Story of Her Rise from Country Singer to Global Icon. And it is literally just all about Taylor Swift. I think it's cute when the people you love just see something and think of you and are able to get it for you. I think this might be one of my favorite gifts I got. I don't remember where I saw this or why I asked for this. I do believe I put this on my Christmas list. It's a mini karaoke machine. Look at how cute this is. Comes with your little mic. Oh. How do I, they say, no one will love you as you are been my anthem recently. This is just such a fun little gift. I highly recommend if you're looking for just a fun gift. Pretty sure it's from Amazon. This is a gift that I wasn't expecting, but when Mama Kelly came for my birthday, I think, and we went to the Bahamas, she had these flip-flops or thongs, as some people may call them. VB Cloud by Vera Bradley. I'm not gonna lie, they're not the most fashionable sandal, okay? But not everything is about fashion. Some things are about feeling comfy. It's about being able to walk without wanting to die. They're flip-flops, but they're the comfiest flip-flops you will ever wear. I can't get it to focus on it because this camera's freaking broken, but so nice. I would put them on and show you my toes, but they're disgusting. If you need a comfy pair of flip-flops and you don't necessarily care about what they look like, get these because I stole them from my mom that entire trip basically. And I think it's so funny that she went home and bought me my own pair so I wouldn't be wearing hers every time she comes. I'm gonna show you guys what I got myself for Christmas last. I call it getting myself stuff for Christmas, but usually I get myself like one nice thing at the end of every year to commemorate Vlogmas, to just commemorate certain surviving another year and to just treat myself. I wanna go through some of the stuff that Gerald got me for Christmas. I had asked for jelly cats. I just think they're so cute. And if that makes me a child, cause I know that they're for children, I simply don't care. He got me this lobster jelly cat. You can't be sad looking at this little lobster smile. He also got me the drunk elephant rose drops. I have the bronzing ones, but I've never tried the blush ones, but I feel like that's something that I would be into. If I'm looking in the viewfinder more than normal, I'm trying to make sure it's not out of focus, so I don't have to redo it again. He got this jar full of different date night ideas. It's 52 things to do on date night. Oh, visit the site of your first date. That would be expensive because we'd have to go all the way back to Wisconsin. I just pulled one out and it says salad night. I'll shove that one all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> Forever stumped on what we should do or something to do. You can grab an idea out of this jar. Also, which I like because he got it for me. So he can't really say no when I pull it out. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you got it for me. <laughs> now you have to do it. This is something I really wanted. If any of you guys know how to play, please teach me the rules because I don't know how to play. Gerald got me a set of pickleball rackets. I just think that we would be so good at pickleball. We had to come to two little cute pickleball bags. That is so adorable. I didn't even like really open this and start looking. Sweatbands. I think in 2024, I want to start filling up my time with activities. I think we all are kind of realizing that we spend too much time on our phones and on social media. I miss when we would just go outside and play and just live in the moment. And I feel like that's where a lot of my unhappiness and just struggles have come from is because I'm constantly staring at my phone, constantly comparing myself to people online. And I think I would just be so much happier if I started finding joy in more things than just the internet and making videos and stuff like that. And honestly, I feel like it'll benefit you guys too because my cup will just be so full. I've done a good job at the end of this year choosing my health and to get on Manjaro and I'm actually switching to Zetbound, which it's the same medication, just for weight loss. And so like, I feel like I've made a lot of good decisions for me physically, but I really need to put that time into my mental state this year. I did a good job at the beginning of last year, but then I kind of lost it when I got off my ADHD meds. The therapist that I just started seeing was able to get me in with a psychiatrist and I have like a two hour appointment today at 4 p.m. So I'm hoping that she has something that can help me because my life was so different when I had those. And I know that they're just a tool, but whatever. I feel like you guys are constantly saying to me like, well, if this doesn't make you happy, like go find 
something else that does. And I don't think that the issue is my job or social media. I think that the issue is, is I'm not doing anything else outside of it and I just sit in my house. There's nothing wrong with having quiet, like mundane life, but I need to start filling it more with things that bring me joy and less things that just make me compare myself to other people. And the people that I love to watch online are always like outside, like doing things. And even if it's just one little thing every day where instead of reading in their bed, they go read at a coffee shop or at a park, just stuff like that. So I thought that pickleball would be a fun thing that I could do instead of just sitting at home all day. And not that we won't sit at home all day because we do that. How cute are these rackets? This one would be mine. Daryl can have this one. Aluchi pickleball rackets. Also, is this a pickleball? I was really excited about these. Now I just gotta convince him to go play pickleball with me. He likes to do outside things. Like he got a longboard and I got roller skates and we tried that and we loved it. I just was incredibly out of shape. I couldn't do it for that long. When I told him what this was, he literally looked at me like, you made me buy you hand water. I'm obsessed with this stuff. It's the Caudalie Eau de Racine, grape water. Even if I do my skincare in the morning, I have such dry skin halfway through the day. I just feel so tight, but I don't wanna go put a whole nother layer of moisturizer on. I feel refreshed and good to go. I don't know if you should put this on with makeup on because if it is just water. I had bought myself a travel size one and I loved it. So I put it on my Christmas list. I'm sure you've seen everyone on TikTok have this little faux pottery mug. I don't know where the original one is from, but this one I just found on Amazon and put it on my list. I'm trying to get into tea more since I got a teapot. I just think this is the cutest little cup. You also could just use this to like store things like jewelry or anything, honestly, like little hair ties. I'm quickly gonna show you what I got myself for Christmas. The first thing is really random and you're gonna probably hate it but I don't know how to explain to you how much joy this brings me especially because I'm going to be living in a house again I'm gonna have a full-size kitchen fingers crossed I've just learned that I feel like I can cook more in a bigger space where I don't feel so crammed and the mess doesn't happen so fast I saw this when I stopped in Nashville to see Sam on my way to Wisconsin and I knew that this was the gravy pourer that I'm gonna pass down to my kids one day and I don't even know that it was made to be a gravy pourer but that's what it's gonna be I wish I had words to explain how much I love my goat gravy for her. Pass the gravy. Okay. Shh. This is iconic. Sorry, my laundry is going, by the way, too. It's really freaking loud. But my big gift to myself, I gotta back you up. Gotta back it up. Something I discovered, honestly, last Vlogmas when I did the little Lego house was how much Legos really do help my mind. The same way that crocheting does. Reading doesn't help my mind as much. Well, it does if I can get into it, but if I'm in a bad mental day, I can't do readings. I can't focus on it. Like my brain just won't shut up. But I learned I really love doing Legos. This year during Vlogmas, I did the up house and I realized how fun it was to film them. There's a girl on TikTok that I love to watch. She's actually super sweet. We're friends on there. I would love to meet her. She builds Legos. They're so satisfying to watch. She builds like the big project level kits that aren't just like sit down and you can build it in two hours. I really wanted to try one, especially because I could see me having like a shelf full of all of the Legos that I build one day. There was a Lego store in Nashville and I saw this. I was torn between a couple of things. I saw this and just the colors in it and my love, obviously, See, my cat's name is Dobby. I love Harry Potter. Legos of all of Diagon Alley. Are you kidding? It is 5,544 pieces, and I'm pretty sure 40.3 inches is like over three feet long. Where she's gonna go is a different question. I thought it would be really fun to make a video inspired by that girl. Just the sounds of the Legos clicking together just mm, is so good. And she'll sit and put something on the TV that's like relevant to whatever it is that she's watching. So she just built the Eiffel Tower and she had Ratatouille on and she just watched Ratatouille like 19,000 times while she built it. I figured we could put on Harry Potter, watch the movies as we build this. It's definitely gonna take me a minute and be a multi-part thing because I cannot do this in one sitting. I don't really have just two or three days straight where all I can do is build Legos. I also think when I go get my nails done, hopefully today, that I'm gonna have them soak off my acrylics and put gel on my nails just for a little bit because they do make certain things harder, like doing Legos. And crocheting, honestly, can get annoying with nails. And I would like to just see how healthy my natural nails can get. I did try and do my own nails for a while last year and I really did try. I wasn't good at it. I was trying to make myself like it, like like doing them myself, but that did not bring me the 
same joy hobby wise that like crocheting and doing Legos and reading books does. So I didn't force myself to keep doing it. She found this blanket for me that is Minnie Mouse, but it's pink. I've had one Barefoot Dreams blanket before and it felt just like this. This side is white with pink. This side is pink with white. I need to leave it out here. It's so cute on my couch. Y'all know I'm a pass holder. I love going to Disney World. It just makes me happy. I'm just word vomiting because even if you don't believe this, I enjoy talking to you and I love hanging out with you. Talk very briefly, honestly, about the whole Vlogmas thing, just because I do believe that you deserve an explanation, but I also need to stop being so mean to myself about it. I'm pretty sure I mentioned somewhere in this video, and honestly, these clips are so out of order and so all over the place. I promise from this point moving forward, we're caught up and it won't be so chaotic or confusing. Sometimes I feel scared, I think, to express to you guys how I'm feeling because I know I'm in a place of such privilege that I feel like me even saying I'm struggling would come off to you as just me being ungrateful because anybody else in my situation would be so happy. I know that you guys get that I'm a human. Just because my job looks different doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to live the human experience. Things in my life the past month just kind of kept happening one thing after the other. And usually, or at least recently, I've been able to just like handle certain things, but it has felt like these tiny little things would just like chip away at me mentally a little bit. And then it would chip away at me a little bit more. And that just kept happening and happening. There was a lot of work things that were stressing me out. I got this opportunity that was so perfect and I was so excited about. And honestly, a part of me like still hopes can work out. That is in regards to my GLP-1 journey and being on this medication and seeing the response from you guys and how many of you guys are just interested to know about it or you're in a position where it's something that you're considering as well. This opportunity would have allowed me to provide you guys with that opportunity to get it and to speak to doctors. It was something I was already using. It was one of those partnerships that felt so perfect that it was almost too good to be true. And then while I was in New York in December, it kind of started to fall apart. There's medicine shortages. My confidence in the company started to slightly go down because I felt like I was having to do everything on my own. And I know that there's nothing you can do about a shortage, but it was more so the responses that I was getting from them just didn't make me feel confident to share it with you guys at this time because I never want to put you in a position where you're going to be spending money months on a service because you want to invest in your health and then you don't get out of it what I told you that you would get out of it. I will never accept a check over your well-being. Like I will never put you in a position to suffer so I can get a check. Over the past couple weeks, I was really getting stressed out about it because it just wasn't working out. And I was supposed to go to LA two days ago on a trip for this partnership. I didn't end up going. At the end of the day, it just wasn't something that I felt confident in sharing with you yet. If there comes a time where that changes and they work on that or they still want to work with me after I kind of put my foot down and said, I'm not continuing in this partnership until I can be confident in this service and that it's going to do what it says it's going to do for the people that follow me and support me. If they're able to grow from that and learn from that and better their customer service and figure it out, we can talk about that down the line. But I had so much anxiety surrounding that and just kind of feeling like I was trapped almost, like I didn't have a choice to back out. Even though every part of me knew that I couldn't do that to you guys, I was so scared to stand up to such a big company. Maybe there will come a day where I will speak more on that. Two days ago, I was supposed to get on a plane and I just didn't get on. I had my bag packed and everything. I was ready to go, but I knew that it wasn't right. So I didn't go. That was one thing over the last few weeks that has just been like killing me. Like I had mentioned, I do keep my personal life pretty private, but just there's a lot of big decisions being made. Big decisions can scare people and can just be tough to make. In general, when you know a big change is coming up, that can just also be stressful. Maneuvering that over the past couple weeks and in the continuing couple of weeks. The other thing that has really been hard on me, people online. And when I say that, I am not referring to anybody who ever wants to keep me in check or to give me constructive criticism on things that I may be doing that they might not like or that they may feel that I could do better. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to always 100% listen to every constructive criticism comment that I get because at the end of the day, there will simply be people who don't like you and I'm not going to change everything about myself to please people on the internet. I don't think you should do that either. But when people are saying things that are valid, I I'm more than open to listen to it and to hear it. And honestly, I can use a good reality check sometimes. I just think that there's a respectful way to go about it. But when I say I'm having a hard time with people on the internet, that is not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the thousands and thousands of just incredibly hateful and just rude and disgusting comments that people leave on people's videos. Honestly, all the platforms, y'all are just saints on YouTube. It's very, very rare that I have a bunch of hate comments on YouTube. If anything, y'all are respectful and will just constructively criticize me. And honestly, on TikTok, they're pretty good too. 
you. It's just when a video goes viral on the wrong side of the internet. I would say 90% of the time, those comments don't bother me because I just know there's somebody in general who is just unhappy with their lives and it makes them feel a little bit better to tear strangers down online. And that makes me sad for them. Like genuinely, I would hope that they could feel better. And for the most part, that's how I'm able to view that. Every once in a while, in situations like this, where I was already upset about getting sick during Vlogmas, had this stressful work situation that I was trying to figure out, trying to figure out what I'm doing moving forward with the podcast. Going home is already hard for me because Wisconsin is just a place where I experienced so much trauma that it's an emotional thing for me to go back there. And honestly, I was just being really hard on myself already for missing days of Vlogmas. If you guys have watched me for years, you know how serious I take Vlogmas and I do not miss days. I felt like such a failure when I got sick. And there was a video that I had posted on Thanksgiving or the day after or something of me and Gerald. He was just standing there. I said, hey, can you stand here? I wanna do a funny dance. It was just me dancing and him standing there. And the comments are really mean. And when I first posted it, I mean, sure, there was probably some hate comments, people saying that he's just with me for my money. It went re-viral on the very wrong side of the internet. And people were telling me that I'm like unworthy of love, that it would be simply impossible that somebody could find me attractive or could love me. I was just already in such a vulnerable place that those comments like really got to me. And I know that this is my job and this is what I sign up for. But at the end of the day, I don't think people understand that like I'm just a person. I'm not a perfect person. There are so many things in my life that I need to be better at and I will continue to try to be better at. And I may not have the best work ethic. I may not be as consistent as people may want me to be. And I may seem like I'm on a fucking roller coaster where I'm always going around in circles and she's a girl who never loses weight. The list of bad things you could say about me is so long, but I am just a person. If everybody else had their entire life on the internet too, I know this is my choice, but if everyone else had their life on the internet too, people would also have so much to say about you and your choices and your life. To just like tell someone that they're unworthy of love because of their body, I don't know, but it got to me more than it should have. And when it comes to Vlogmas and I was forced to take that break, I realized how much of a failure it made me feel. And then I kept asking myself why I felt that way. And I quickly realized that I had started to find my worth in in social media again. I almost forgot that I was a human and that people get sick. This wasn't just like I had a cough, like I couldn't stand up. I had such bad pneumonia. Even now my lungs haven't fully healed, like I still get winded so fast. I can't sing for more than like a minute without my voice cracking and going. I've been talking for a long time, now my voice is starting to hurt. I was genuinely sick and I was sitting there telling myself how much of a failure I was, even though I was posting every single day on YouTube, every single day on TikTok, which was my mistake. I shouldn't have tried to do double vlog. Miss. I just didn't want to let anybody down. I wanted to give everybody the content that they wanted. It was just too much. It's not something I will attempt to do in the future because by the time that I got sick, my body must have just been so tired. I had posted almost 25 videos or more than 25 edited videos at that point between TikTok and YouTube. My TikToks that I was making weren't just like three minute TikToks. They were like seven minute fully edited videos. And so it felt at that point that I had done Vlogmas. And so that was my mistake. And I apologize for that. I spread myself way too thin and sometimes you have to do that in order to learn the lesson because I will not be doing that next year. I just realized that my worth was completely coming from social media and I was looking for like approval from social media again. And that made me realize that my relationship with it had become unhealthy again. And that's probably why I had been viewing it so negatively the past like six months. And I feel like at the end of every year, I always sit down and I just try to evaluate where am I at? Where am I going? And I am someone who suffers with mental health issues. I had convinced myself to come back. Andrew edited the YouTube videos while I was driving to Wisconsin because I obviously couldn't edit and drive. And then I got to my hotel. I saw all those comments and I was able to get myself to post a video. And then I just couldn't. I couldn't be online. I knew that I had to choose myself. If I wanted to be able to come back here and think of YouTube and social media and everything as a positive thing again, that I needed to take a step back, change my mindset on it. Stop telling myself that like I'm a bad person and I did something wrong because I posted 18, 19 videos in a month. That's so many videos and I never miss Vlogmas. It's something that I take so seriously for you guys because I know how much you love it, but I just needed to choose myself. And I know that that has made some of you upset and I am so Sorry, but I won't say that I won't do it again because I would choose myself again because I have taken the last two weeks, started going back to therapy. I have figured so many life things out in the past two weeks and I now can see the future moving forward, where I'm going, what it looks like. And I need it, I needed it. And that might not make sense to you. You do deserve the world and you deserve all of the content. I don't know that I'll ever have like the right words to explain it to you because it's in my head and it doesn't quite make sense. I knew that if I wanted to be able to have a healthy relationship with it, I needed to change the way I was thinking 
thinking about it. And in order to do that, I needed time and I needed space. And it does suck that that affected you guys because you guys aren't the problem. But I just needed to be Samantha for a little bit and not Samantha Joe. I needed to make sure that this made me happy and that this is something I wanted to keep doing because it had just been destroying my peace. I've said this before, but I don't believe as humans we were ever made to have so many people's opinions on our lives. And I think maybe that's why I do want to start finding hobbies outside of social media, like the crochet, the Legos, the pickleball, like things that can ground me in real life. And I feel like that will just benefit us in our relationship and stuff in the long run. I'm proud of everything that I did in 2023, but I still know that I have more room to grow. I've made some big girl decisions in the past couple months and I've had to stop being afraid to take that step and make the appointments. Like find the therapist, find the psychiatrist, go to the doctor. I've always been so scared of going to the doctor because all they ever say is lose weight. To stop being so afraid of those things and just face them head on. Growing up and making, like learning to make better financial decisions and stop buying so much shit and get rid of more stuff. Like my closet has so much space in it now since I've started to get rid of my clothes. I just want to focus on the things that matter more because I feel like this year with my TikTok blowing up, everyone wanting so much from me that I just kind of forgot about me and I forgot my why. But I think I figured it out. I just kind of have felt scared to make this video and to come back because I know that I've probably disappointed some of you, but the people who care will be here. And if you have decided to not care anymore, then you don't have to be here either. I understand, but I just want to say thank you for supporting me, for dealing with me and just being patient because so many of you have DM'd me the sweetest things. I think a lot of you do get that I'm just a person, no different than the best friend that you run and get fast food with in your car late at night. I'm excited for whatever this year has to offer. And I'm also ready for the effort that it takes to have a good year. And if I cry a lot over the next few weeks, it's because of restarting therapy. And it's always the worst when you restart. You dig up all the trauma. I'll stop word vomiting because I think I've been talking for an hour. Love you. I really do. Ooh, I cannot smell in there. I hate silverware the most. Ugh, it went through my crock. I might find more. We'll do it later. How do I get something out of here? I dropped a pearl down the sink. I need to run the dishwasher. I'm gonna lose the pearl. I'm sure it's not real. <gasps> it's like a game of operation. No! And start. Hopefully it shuts. This dishwasher sucks. It's not even attached. I should put a work order in for that. Ah, oh, beautiful. We're cleaning this place up. I literally cannot move forward in my life. I'm still using my Cancuzzi. I can't move forward in my life. Why do I have the cover on it? I can't move forward. I can't get anything done until this place is clean. My personal life isn't personal life in at the moment. I think I've been trying to film this video for the past five days and I just need to get it over with. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so I got tagged. I don't actually, I don't know that I've ever been tagged in a video more than you guys tagging me. Her name is Steph. She posted a video on TikTok asking for YouTubers who just vlog in their house and it just feels like a FaceTime call. But is that the vibe? Do you guys actually like it? Some people will say that my content's lazy now, but then people are asking for videos. Like I've never had so many people tag me in something. I love just filming in my house. That's all I fucking do. I don't think you guys get it. I don't leave my house, but I'm confused now. Now I don't know what I want to do because I thought you didn't like the FaceTime boring videos of me in my apartment. But now so many of you guys were saying you do. I'm confused. And like, I know I'm never going to please everyone. I've passed that point where I care about that. We are cleaning up the house. It definitely needs it. I canceled my cleaners this week. I just wasn't ready. I have been house smelling even more so than normally. I packed up a bunch of stuff. Before I went home for Christmas, I, I bagged up a bunch of donation clothes. I'm in the decluttering process, but I have to get it out of my house. That whole cart back there all needs to go. I'm donating a lot of the bed sheets and the whole bottom is stuff for the storage unit. Believe it or not, I've made such progress on my laundry. I only have this stuff right here and a little bit right there, which if you know me, that's pretty darn good. I usually have so much laundry to do because I just struggle to do it. Oh, actually, my suitcase from Wisconsin I have to wash too. I feel like watching a TV or listening to a podcast. I miss my podcast so much. The podcast is coming back, you guys. We really want a studio space. It has become so hard to film my podcast in this apartment with how loud it is most of the time. So even though my lease is not up until the end of March, I am in the house hunting process to find a house to rent. Even if I have 
the double pay rent for a couple months just so we can have a room to set the podcast up. I actually am touring a place at two o'clock today. I actually had found a house in St. Pete that I really freaking love. And I had given up the hopes of living in St. Pete because rent in St. Pete for like a house big enough that has a fenced in yard for Duncan, that's my number one priority. There's so many things I would love to have in a house, but one, I don't wanna be paying $6,000 in rent. And two, I think it's time that Duncan deserves his own fenced in yard for him to have space to run. Every time we've been in an Airbnb where he's had a yard, he just lives his best life and that's what he deserves. I will give up literally almost anything to get Duncan a yard. I need a podcast room and a yard and preferably a toilet, that's all. I had toured one in Tampa that I liked, but when we went there, it just didn't seem like the right vibes. I randomly saw this one in St. Pete and it was literally four minutes from where I live now. In an area of St. Pete, I've always wanted to live. We toured it, the pictures looked really scary, like really dark and obviously it doesn't work for filming and stuff, but it looked like it had the biggest backyard. It was so much better in person than it was in the pictures. Realtors need to learn to take better pictures of houses. Like why are we taking such shitty pics? I toured it, loved it, got approved, but they had to wait for rental verification and I gave the past three years of my rental verification. I don't know that I've ever gone over with you guys the horror of my landlord in Nashville. Those of you guys that have reached out to me personally being like, hey, like I would love to like rent the house that you lived in. I have responded quite frankly that you do not want to live in a house with that landlord. If you look him up, which I should have done before signing a lease, he has horrible reviews. Horrible reviews as a landlord. He treated it as if it was my house. The electricity would go out in the entire place and it would be my job to fix it. And not just like a power outage. He built a plot of land and then built a cluster of houses on top of it. And by the way, every single one of us had issues with the landlord. Everyone seemed to have a problem with the same person. In fact, when we moved out, which we all have, by the way, none of us stayed, we tried to make my neighbor replace the entire garage, including the floor and the walls. And I went in there and there was nothing wrong with the garage. The circuitry was not done well. Even when I moved in, there was holes in the door, water damage on some of the flooring. And I'm not saying that like there's not regular wear and tear that happens when you live somewhere. That's normal. There was two things on my security deposit that I willingly accepted. It was the shower head. Bellhop accidentally packed my shower head in the boxes. I had taken it off to replace it with a different one. They packed it, so it came with me. I obviously had to replace their shower head. And then it was a light fixture that was hanging in the hallway when you would first walk into the house. Everyone kept hitting their head on it and it was just in the weirdest spot and it didn't make sense. So we hired an electrician with permission from the landlord to take it down and we had it in the garage. All I'm gonna say is it mysteriously disappeared even though we told the movers to leave it in the garage. That's all I'm gonna say. But there were other things that he sent back in the security deposit that just made me laugh. Little damages done around the house that we were able to prove with pictures were there when I moved in. Or there was this light that was on top of the garage door when you would go into the garage to like light up front of the garage. I don't know, but it never worked. It never had a light bulb in it. It was never properly installed. Never was a functioning light. He tried to tell me that he had to replace it because I broke it. It was never even screwed into the wall properly. And so with that being said, my first St. Pete apartment rental verification came back fine. I'm pretty sure I got my entire deposit back from that place. My current landlord said I'm great. The Nashville house responded to the rental verification saying that I caused significant damage to the property. So the owners are having to think on if they wanna let me have that house or not. Hence, I'm going to tour another house today in case they don't give that one to me, which this house I'm gonna go tour today is smaller, but she's really cute. <laughs> Maybe it'll all work out for the best. But that's fucking annoying. Like I didn't significantly damage your house. You're such a shitty landlord. It makes no sense. I got that place professionally cleaned twice before I moved out or after I moved out. And I had cleaners come every month. I have proof of a lot of the things that I'm talking about, which I will be gathering later to send to them. But it's just annoying that I have to do that in the first place. I got on the phone and I was venting to Jenica because that's just such bullshit. I would vent to Jenica the entire time I lived there about how awful this landlord was. If I wanted to be a homeowner, I would just buy a fucking house. I gave them her number. She said that they could call her and like ask her questions if they want to. It's just ridiculous. I also still have the numbers of all of my neighbors. I'm pretty sure someone moved in less than a week after I moved out. I'm sorry, if I significantly damaged your property, you wouldn't be able to have a new tenant move in. You'd be having to replace the entire fucking house. It makes me angry. I got almost my entire deposit back. You wouldn't give someone a security deposit back if they significantly left your house in shambles. So I'm a little bit angry because I feel like things have just been like one on top of the other on top of the other. And that's not the energy that I want to start 2024 with. I'm not here for that. That. That's bleh. I don't want it. I think I started this saying that I'm really missing my podcast and I'm really excited to like get it up and running again. We just need a place to do it. And I'm actually going on somebody's podcast on February 9th and they're flying to me to film it with me. So I need to have that room set up by February 9th. That's kind of why we're in a little bit of a hurry because I'm also going home to Wisconsin again from the 18th 
to the 25th for Jaden's wedding, which I'm in. Want to see my dress? I just got this in the mail yesterday. I had ordered dresses forever ago. She had us order them from Azazi. When I was in Rachel's wedding, we also ordered our dresses from Azazi, but these ones, okay, love Rachel, but these are much comfier. Like, I don't know if it's the velvet that just makes them like stretchy and nice of this on. The issue is I ordered my first dresses back in like October, but I filmed a video on TikTok and I posted it asking you guys to tell me which dress to pick because I had gotten two. Those were in a size 22. Since then I have lost 40 pounds. The weight loss is starting to slow down more because that's normal in the beginning. You kind of just like drop weight really fast. I'm still on track. I'm losing about like three to four pounds a week. And these take some time to come in. I ordered another one because the one I was gonna wear was already just too big and it didn't look good. I ordered it in a size 18. It fits really nice. My boobies are very much boobying. When I tried it on before. It has these strings that crisscross like over the front of your chest. And I didn't love them, but now that this dress fits snugger than the other one did, I think they actually look much nicer. The issue is, is it's much too long and I don't know anyone that can hem it for me. So I'm considering getting a sewing machine to hem it myself. Is it hard to find someone to hem something? It's on my to-do list for the next couple weeks, but what's today? The fourth? I'm going to get my hair done before the wedding. I leave for that on the 14th and I come back on the 16th because I am going to Texas again because I really love Devin and she's just such a good friend and she was so sweet and her vibes were so good and I'm excited just to go hang out with her again. I haven't booked a hotel for that yet. I'm not gonna be here for like the second half of January. So I kind of have to figure my shit out now. That way when I come home, me and Andrew can just focus on getting the podcast room set up so we can get the podcast back up and running as fast as possible. I think we're also changing the name of the podcast to Sidetracked. It just feels right. I just procrastinated for so long. Every time I get talking to you, I just start word vomiting. I don't wanna clean, but I actually have to. It's 11.04 and I have to be in Tampa at two. So let's clean for like the next hour and a half and then get ready to go look at a house. I always get nervous in front of realtors to film the house, but I'm gonna grow a pair today. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna film it for you. Did I show you the Baymax ears that I found? I was having a really, really, really rough couple of days once I got home from Wisconsin, which is normal for me post travel, but also, like I said, just had some things happen in my personal life that I just wasn't expecting. And I'm just at the point in my life where I think my vibe for 2024 is I'm done letting people shit on me and like think of me as an option and as a choice. And I need to stop telling myself that I should just be grateful that anyone wants to have me in their life at all. I don't owe people anything for being my friend, which does that sound bad? In my mind, like I have to get you all these gifts because you're doing me a favor by being my friend and I have to go above and beyond and be okay with however you treat me because I'm just lucky that people want to be in my life at all. And I need to ditch that energy. Like I can't think that way anymore because it just ends up with me getting shit on over and over and over again. I have to love myself more than that. I can say I love myself all I want, but if I'm not doing the actions of loving myself, then I'm all talking no game. I'm really just getting into it, huh? I have I haven't fully decided my goals for the year or my vibe for the year yet. I want to sit down and start journaling and which I've tried to do before and I never stick to and make a vision board and set my intentions for the year, less resolution-y and more just writing specific things out. But my brain will not let me do that until this house is clean. If I try and sit on my couch and crochet or do the Lego set that I bought, I feel so guilty because I know I have things that I should be doing. So if I get it done now, when I come home from viewing the house, we can just have a little chill hangout evening. Do some Legos, crochet my hat. I'm really boring, huh? 25 years old and all I want to do is build Legos, crochet, and talk to my camera. To each their own. Cheers. Let's clean. So nostalgic pulling out the G7X to film because this is what I started my YouTube channel on pretty much. There's not really a good place for it in this car though, unfortunately. So this is where you get to go. I'm stuck at a very long stoplight, but I'm on my way to go tour a house. I don't know if I'll show it to you yet or not, just in case I do decide to get it. I don't need one of you guys stealing it from me. My fear is that it's not big enough, but I also don't need a ton of space, but I do have like lots of things and I feel like I've done a good job of getting rid of a lot. But at the same time, I just want to have room. I don't want to feel like claustrophobic 
claustrophobic and stuck. I love my apartment and the way like it's decorated and everything. I just don't love how loud it is. And they're building some buildings around it. Oh no. They're building skyscrapers near it. And they're to the point where they're getting taller. So you're hearing more of the building noises mixed with the rock concert. But I would like somewhere a little bit bigger than my apartment. The house I'm going to look at now is three bedrooms. And then it obviously has the yard. I just need to find the courage to ask the realtor to give me some alone time in the house. Like, can I do a quick little look-see on my own? Just to get the vibes. I need to know. So we'll see. But I'm excited. And the location of this house, even though it's in Tampa, is so good. I'm passing the church that I go to and it's only five minutes away from it. But I still really love the one in St. Pete too. We'll see what feeling I get when I step inside. This is the kitchen. I can't. It's so good. Look at that fireplace. The wood floors. Master bedroom. Bathroom is kind of tight. Wait, is that a face or a rose? I can't tell. But really good lighting. And a shelf. That's nice. Closet. I'm gonna have to downsize if I pick this place. There's also room that I could put an armoire or something. I can't with the fireplace. This would be the room for the podcast. Set it up on this wall. The brick. A guest bedroom. So like Mama Kelly, anyone who's staying here could stay in here. I kind of could see this being the master. It's another closet in here where I can put all my shoes. Because this bathroom is just bigger. And it has a window. I'm a sucker for a bathroom with a window. And the tub. Guys, I get that feeling in here that I think you're supposed to get. There's a cute little area, like the washer and dryer. Plenty of like space to put stuff. I probably wouldn't want to stack a bunch of stuff on here because you can see it from the kitchen, but just look how nice the kitchen is, how much cooking space, all of the windows, the different textured windows. You decorate that with some cute stuff. Endless cabinet space. And there's also a cute backyard that's all fenced in. So the front and the back is fenced. They would leave the lights. I feel like this is my house. Okay, we'll see. I just lugged a bunch of stuff downstairs, like garbage and stuff. My house looks so clean right now. The entry area was just full of garbage, big black garbage bags that won't fit down the chute, as well as all of the bags of donation clothes. I took down most of the trash. I loaded up the donations. Stuffed pepper casserole. This was so good last time I got it. I need to get rid of this soup. Perfect. Now I have food without having to cook. I feel like I say this every time I open a factor box. I know they sponsor these videos sometimes, but 90% of the boxes that I get from them, I've paid for. It's just so worth it, especially if you're somebody like me who struggles with binge eating. Put it in the microwave, throw it in the oven for seven minutes. The microwave only takes two, but I always cook mine for three. So you always prefer my food to be like a little bit overcooked. I don't know why.